Please listen carefully. Hello, universe, and welcome to the Optimist Daily Update. I'm Christy Jansen. And I'm Summers McKay. And we are part of the team behind the Optimist Daily, making solutions the news. We bring you reader-funded solutions news every day in order to change the tenor of news media, social media, and the direction of your day to help us all get focused on what's going right in the world. Seven days a week, we publish positive news stories written by award-winning journalists and delivered online to your inbox and through our social channels. And also, we are sharing these solutions in a commute-worthy, walk-worthy, home office-worthy, TikTok-worthy, no, never mind, not yet, (laughs) podcast. (laughs) Today is Friday, the 17th of December, 2021. Christy, it's my last official day of recording the pod this year. Oh, that's right, because you're going off. I mean, we're we still have some um, best of for the week t- for you and I to record. Right, right. But, but those are in our like future universe versions of ourselves. Exactly. But yeah, we uh, the Optimist Daily Update will be going next week, but it is going to be in the hands of <laughs> Amelia, Ariel, a little bit of Christy, but Amelia, Ariel, and Carissa. Because I, no, I think I think I should just let them do the whole week. Oh, I think you should too. That'd be pretty cool. That'd be pretty cool. Yep. We're going to leave the kids in charge and Christy and I are just (laughs) taking off. No, it has been an amazing year working on the Optimist Daily Update. You guys, uh, every week we've been telling you about how listeners have grown. And once again, we are more than 30% over our listeners from last month at this time. It's just crazy how much we are growing. Uh, and so everybody who listens, everybody who shares, thank you for listening to the Optimist Daily Update. Thank you for tuning in every day to get a daily dose of optimism, to find some solution-based journalism, and to learn how to make this world a better place, oftentimes by making yourself a better person. So I love what we do, Christy. We have we have pretty cool jobs. And yeah. even though I'm taking a week away, I'm looking forward to next year. I am too. I am too. And I think that is really the core of what we are trying to do because it's through healing ourselves that we can actually then be ready to heal the world. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> that's that's how, what I'm starting to, it's starting to emerge for me in, in my personal life and in my work life. So that's what we're, <laughs> so I like that. And speaking of. (laughs) Exactly. Perfect cue up. Why don't you tell the world about our guest today, Summers? I will. It's my honor to. We have had some amazing guests on the Optimist Daily in the past few weeks, and today is no different. Today we have the author of a new book titled Adaptable, Alexa Carlin. Alexa is a public speaker, TV personality, author, and founder and CEO of Women in Power X, which is WEX, W-E-X. Alexa uses her infectious energy and courageous spirit to empower women to turn their obstacles into opportunities and pursue their dreams. Now, in particular, yes, she has worked with Fortune Global 500 brands and been on Oprah Winfrey Network and Fox and ABC and CBS and TEDx, and she's done tons of stuff. But this book is so phenomenal because it takes post-traumatic growth into really good tactics. Alexa, welcome to the Optimist Daily Update. How are you today? Thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm doing well. Uh, That's your Alexa going off. (laughs) Yeah, I know. I was going to ask you, Alexa, with your name (laughs) and this and the the smart speakers that are taking over the planet. (laughs) Okay, so I just went on mute for a second because my (laughs) smart speaker decided to start yelling at us. That is a very funny reality. I'm going to, there's going to be some clunky noises, but I'm going to go unplug that thing. It, um, it happens so often now in every interview. Um, they're like, Oh, let me just go turn that off. I mean, I have ones at my house, but I renamed them echo. And there was, uh, actually just, um, a news uh, story about, Alexa's changing their name. And my mom <laughs> called me and she goes, are you going to change your name? And I'm like, what? No, but, but it is, it is affecting people, especially young girls in school and getting sure. bullied and stuff. But, um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's 
been interesting to to now see my name everywhere, but yeah. through a device yeah. that um you know takes <laughs> orders and and all that and gives me gave me election results for no apparent reason in the middle of our interview. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh how funny! Well, all right, my uh, smart speaker is unplugged, so we can return to actually using your name during this interview, Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Uh. All right, so let's get back to Adaptable, which, ironic, I guess you have had to be adaptable now that your name has become an electronic device. But uh, share a little bit with our listeners, what made you write this book? Yeah, I mean, um, I was, it's been my dream since I'm 10 years old to be a published author. And I um, got a publishing deal in 2020. And the first idea for this book that I wanted to write as like my first published book was actually something different. I had a different theme around it, a different title, which, um, you know, may be written one day as my next book. But while I was working through all the different pivotal moments in my life, in my journey and, and the transformational lessons that are linked to each very vulnerable, real, raw story. I noticed a uh, underlying theme and in every part along this journey that really changed me, really affected who I am, I've had to adapt in order to not give up, in order to stand back up, even when I was knocked down over and over and over again. And so this idea for adaptable um, really came about very organically. And once that um, idea came to me, I wrote this book within like less than six months because it just flowed everything that I wanted to say. And, and my goal is that every reader really walks away after reading this, rediscovering the light within them, rediscovering that hope that may have been lost, understanding that they always have the power to adapt to the things that they cannot control. So regardless of the challenges, the circumstances, or the odds stacked against them, they can still thrive and pursue the life that they desire and deserve. So the book is part memoir, part life guide, right? Which is how the, the stories come together. At the beginning of the book, you talk about deeply traumatic and uh, sort of one hit after another that just kept coming in your own life. Can you share a little bit with our audience about really what you thought you were at the lowest of the low and then it just kept coming? Definitely. So I was in college. I was growing my blog at the time, always have been an entrepreneur. I started my first business when I was 17. And then there was a lot of different um, challenges that that came up through with my family, um, my sister, and I thought... Um, I was at a very low point with a, a relationship, just everything. I, I, I was at one point on top of the world growing this blog a few months away from graduating college and moving to New York City to pursue my dreams in fashion. And then uh, January 26, 2013, I was set to graduate in May of that year. Uh, I had this crazy near-death experience. Um, I was rushed to the emergency room when my mom was actually visiting me in college. And my blood pressure was dropping rapidly and we had, we had no clue what was going on, but I was having a very hard time being able to breathe. And I remember there were, were like, you know, one doctor, two doctors, maybe monitoring me and then 10 doctors and nurses. And then all of a sudden I look around, there's like 25 people surrounding me and they took my mom into a separate room from where I was. And they said, your daughter's body is going into septic shock. We have to induce her into a medical coma, call your family. She has 24 hours to live. And I was induced into a medical coma in the coma for six days in the ICU for 10 and was given a 1% chance to live. And this changed my life completely. And not only from the experiences that I had while I was in the coma, while I was in the ICU, really touching on the power of the mind. But afterwards, uh, six months later, while I was struggling with post-traumatic stress disorder and, and living in fear, I actually ended up getting sick again. And that was the onset of my autoimmune disease, which has been the hardest thing I've ever had to deal with and still deal with because it's chronic and uh, there's no cure for it. Wow. Uh, that's quite a story. But 
you were able to reconnect with something hopeful in the end. And and that's what I'm interested in hearing that next, the next part of that. How did you adapt from those really um, challenging circumstances and the, that challenging diagnosis into somebody who's dedicated to sharing sort of this, how to thrive in the face of the challenges? So there was a long time that I was waiting, waiting for something to change. And I think a lot of us can uh, resonate with that, right? We're waiting for this pandemic to be over. We're waiting for a new job or to move or a relationship. And we're waiting and waiting and waiting for something to change in order for us to live the life that we want and desire. And for so long, I was waiting to get healthy from this autoimmune. After I graduated college, I still moved to New York City, got my dream job working in the fashion industry, but then I was getting sicker and sicker from the onset of this autoimmune, had to move back home with my parents. I'm now 22 years old, and I just felt like all my dreams were taken from me. And for seven long years, I was in and out of doctors, in and out of hospitals, um, really, really going through a debilitating illness. I mean, for eight months, I was too sick to walk my dog out of my house. Mm. And in the beginning, I was like, all right, well, you know, let me just wait until I get healthy. But once one month, two months, a year goes by, I just got so sick and tired of waiting. And I, I was uh, a victim to my mm. circumstance, a victim to this illness. But I remember this one moment, I looked at myself in my bathroom mirror and I changed one word in one sentence. And instead of asking myself, why did this happen to me? I asked, why did this happen for me? And that led me on a, a journey of curiosity. And so a lot of people at this time when I was working to heal from post-traumatic stress, so from my near-death experience in my past while learning to live with this new normal of mine in a way, um, a lot of people just said, just have hope. <laughs> and I write this, uh, this is a chapter in Adaptable, mm -hmm. right? It's like, I just felt that was such empty advice because yeah. I, you know, I couldn't find the hope. I. Well, it's also it, kind of passive, right? It, right? As opposed to the active, uh, like the, how you framed that I think is quite brilliant actually. And it reminds me of uh, Adi Barkin who has uh, ALS. He's an activist that I follow a lot here in Santa Barbara, but when you are faced with challenging circumstances to instead of being a victim of it, ask how you can use it to expand yourself and that curiosity. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, definitely. Like how, how can we turn our obstacles into opportunities versus right. waiting for us to overcome our obstacles? I mean, we're life is f filled with challenges, filled with obstacles, whether they're super small or like you have a fight with your your spouse or your kid and, and whatever obstacle that is, or they're really big, right? Financial obstacles, health obstacles. And so many times we're waiting to be happy until we overcome them or waiting to pursue our dreams until we overcome them. But why would we want to spend our whole life trying to overcome things? Like instead, mm -hmm. flip it and and turn that obstacle into an opportunity. And so when I couldn't find hope, when I couldn't find that light at the end of the tunnel, I exchanged that with curiosity. And so I became super curious to what may happen if I don't give up. And, and this is a very optimistic viewpoint, but it, it saved my life, this mindset. And it's helped me in my personal life, in my health challenges and in my career, because there's been so many times I'm hit with rejection, right? I'm pitching myself for speaking opportunities or sponsorships or whatever it may be. And you get rejection after rejection and it's easy to give up. But if you have that insatiable curiosity to what may happen if I pitch myself one more time, go on one more podcast interview, call one more person, go on one more date, you never mm -hmm. know you know, what may happen. I'm a big believer that it only takes one, one person, one decision, one action step to possibly change your life forever. And that even goes back to them giving me a 1% chance in the coma. I mean, there was one time I was speaking at one of my conferences and I asked the audience, it was like hundreds of people, if I said that you can achieve your dreams, your biggest dreams, whether you want to be president, a rock star, whatever it is, but you only have a 1% chance of making it happen, but it can happen, but it's 1%. How many of you would 
quit everything right now and go full force with it. <laughs> like not one person <laughs> raised their hand, right? Cause they're like that Alexa, that's ridiculous. The odds are not in my favor, but if the doctors, if my family and friends said, Oh, well, she's only got a 1%. So, I mean, we might as well just give up on her. You know, I I wouldn't, right. I wouldn't be here today. And, and I think that it's your job and you, you should do this for yourself to put yourself in that 1%. But it goes back to what you were saying. Like you have to shift your mindset and perspective to put the ownership back in your hands, to have control over your own life, even when you don't have control over everything that's happening around you. Amazing. So in, <laughs> in the book, you give tactics. And I loved in the the first sort of tactic that you shared, which was writing your own comeback story. And so many of us can get in the hits keep coming mindset. I know like it, it's very easy for mental health to be at risk and to be under stress and, you know, that you just can be in this hits keep coming mindset. How do you do writing your own comeback story? What's the tool? And, you know, how if someone's sitting there going, no, everything bad just keeps happening. How do they shift that focus using that tool? So a comeback story is very personal to you. But I, the stories that we tell ourselves end up, you know, morphing our reality. And, you know, we've heard it a million times, our life is the way that we perceive it. And, and so what this comeback story does is it gives you that courage. It gives you that storyline that you are strong enough to come back regardless of what's happening. Mm-hmm. So from the action steps you take to um, creating the the mantras to finding the courage to keep on going and so and so it, it's like a bit of journalistic vision boarding right is that yeah, kind of kind of what it's so, doing right yeah so it's basically painting the picture to show yeah this happened in my life right like so I had this near death experience because of that I have a chronic illness that I have to live with for the rest of my life it's debilitating it's hard but it's also made me a more empathetic person. It's also led me to share my story vulnerably and authentically to inspire others. And because of that, I'm going to make a bigger impact. And so it's, it's kind of showing this yin and yang where Mm -hmm. it's not dismissing like this hasn't affected you because what you go through does affect you. And and that's okay. If you look, you search and find the good and the positive from that. Right. And it's, it's, I mean, this is, this is one of my uh, passions is looking at the sort of that life of life affirmingness in big obstacles, big challenges. How can you, what is the lesson you can find in that, in your debilitating autoimmune disorder? How does that, how does that actually make you into the person you want to be as opposed to keeping you from being the person you want to be? Right. Right. At the end of the day, like, you know, I don't think everything is your fault. I know sometimes people say that, like, you know, everything's your fault. You take ownership. I, I don't mm-hmm. think that's to be true, right? I don't think it's my fault that I had a near-death experience or a bacteria got in my bloodstream or I have this autoimmune. Um, but when I understand the concept of what the, what people are trying to to say when they when they say, you know, take ownership over everything, it's it's more so that you don't fall victim to right. the things that you can't control. So I know that I, I don't believe that this experience or my autoimmune is my fault, but I can decide what, how I choose to react to it. And that's what I take ownership. Right. So I, I had to decide to accept what I cannot control, accept that this is part of me, but decide that it's not going to define what I can or cannot do. Right. And but, fault is such a weighted yeah. word, right? Yeah. Fault is so much of a value proposition word where it's like, accepting your reality. And uh, Chrissy, you, you and I talk about this all the time, but it's not looking through rose colored glasses, but you know, it's not pretending reality isn't reality, but it's saying, what can I do with this reality to make it right. better? To make it right. better or to just to make it uh, have meaning for me. That's Viktor Frankl's whole insight in relation mm-hmm. to how do you, how do you create a life of meaning? When most of most of the world, we don't have much control over, even our own bodies, to some mm-hmm. extent, we right. don't have a lot of control yeah. over. Um, but well, how do you find meaning in it? 
Yeah, there, there's a, there's a chapter in Adaptable, actually, Christy, and I know you, you got a chance to look at the book briefly today, but Alexa, you talk about controlling what you do have control over and releasing the rest. We find, and this is sort of at its base, why the Optimist Daily exists is that people get confounded and stuck in the mud with when all they're presented with are problems instead of solutions. So when you talk about what we have control over and how we can create solutions, kind of what tools do you give people to know how to assess what a solution or, you know, what is it that they control versus what they can't control? Yeah, definitely. So this um, chapter really came about from what I experienced in the coma, where I didn't have control over my my movement, my breath. Um, I couldn't have a glass of water. I didn't have control over anything but my thoughts and my mind. And and that lesson was so powerful. And and for everyday life, if we can re- remember that, then um, this tool that I offered in the book really can be transformational. And so when you're feeling like the, that heavy weight or that low feeling or um, the disempowerment or low confidence, most of that comes from something that you're thinking about that you have no control over. And so, so for example, if you are going into interview for a job or pitch for, um, you know, to land a big client or deal, whatever it is in, in your profession, a lot of times we sit for an interview, for an example, we, we focus on, I hope the interviewer likes me. I wonder what the other applicants are like. I hope I get the job, but none of that you can control. You can't control someone's opinion of you. You can't control who else is applying, but you can control how well educated you are about the industry, about the, the position, how much knowledge you have, how confident you feel, how much practice you have. So when you kind of lay that all out, now your energy is focused on all the things you do have control over, which is naturally going to increase your confidence level. Most of the time we're focused on all these things we have no control over and it depletes our level of confidence and our optimism for yeah, the future. And our sanity. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, think about what happened the last two years with the pandemic. How yeah. many times are we focused on all the things we can't control? right? Mm -hmm. I can't control when this is going to be over, but I can control making this still as part of my life. So I'm going to make it a beautiful time in my life. Sure. It looks different, but that that's, I don't have control over the pandemic. So why would I focus my energy on it? This is so interesting. And what you're, what you're asking of yourself and of other people is to remain, it's kind of like staying vulnerable to your goals and to your ideals even in the face of challenges, when you're talking about the 1% chance that you would wake up from that coma and still going for it, (laughs) and the 1% chance that you could achieve your biggest dreams for you was writing a book, which you've now done in an exceedingly well, (laughs) and it's really exciting to see what has come out of that. Um, But you have to go for it in, even when you get turned down, you still get back up and you go again and you ask again and you all you have control over is your own reaction and your own perspective. But you have that's it's staying vulnerable. It's staying attached to what you want and right. then asking for it. And, and that doesn't mean that we don't feel everything. No, like I, exactly. I have a chapter called feeling the feelings mm-hmm. um, instead of fixing them. Exactly. Feel right. Them. I yeah. mean, it, I don't want people listening, thinking like, you know, well, what happens if I'm just in so much pain or or loss or heartbreak? And I've been there. I've lived in darkness for so long. And the key is just like thinking about what the alternative is, right? You can sit and suffer from from that choice of allowing all of these things to victimize you, or you can choose to, yes, you feel sad, but put a time limit on that and work to have tools like books or podcasts or people in your life that can help you see a different side of of what's going on in your life. It's all just shifting that perspective. And so it's important to to allow yourself to feel all of those feelings and to un, to understand that they are valid. Like it's okay if you're feeling sad and not motivated and confident one day, but the goal is is to be happy or feel joy more times than you don't. And, and that to that is is hard work. It is very hard work, but you deserve that, and and you sh- you should do that hard work for yourself 
And so when you're hit with challenges, they become not easier, but you, you know, in the back of your mind that if you went through everything you went through in your life and you've come back from that, you now have that strength to do that again and again and again, and, (laughs) and to allow yourself to do that. If it doesn't end you, it makes you stronger. Yeah. So let it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I read I read that <laughs> chapter. If you yeah, like. there's there's a big uh, quote and chapter about adding those forward. So um, you know the the saying that what what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. I was like, there's no way this is true. When my near death experience made me anything but stronger. In the beginning, I was like mm-hmm. in, living in New York City. I felt so weak. I I couldn't live my life. I couldn't eat anything. I was like, how is this making me stronger? And then I added those four words, if you let it, and it it's a choice, right? And you may not, the st- strength comes in many different forms. It may not look like what you want it to look like in the beginning, but you have to allow your hardships to make you stronger or else they're always going to be this like weight on you. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love- I'm going <laughs> through, I'm flipping through the book right now and <laughs> I'm like, oh, I want to read this quote. Oh, I want to read this quote. Why don't you, why don't you read a quote, um, Summers? Okay. And then right. let's, let's dig in with uh, Alexa a little bit on her life now. So, okay, Christy, I will read a quote from the book. Resiliency isn't something you have. It's a muscle you build. All of your challenging experiences have built up that muscle for you to survive this far. I think what I love about that quote is that there are some things that are innate to people, right? The the idea of grit, right? There was a the big work that was done around identifying whether or not someone had a lot of grit was an, a leading indicator of their future success in life. But so many of these things actually have to be built over time. And I love that you talk about resiliency is a skill. It's not an endowed gift. Yeah, I mean, um, I lo- I love that you you mentioned that quote. It uh, took me a long time to learn that <laughs> it really did, mm-hmm. uh, but through experience and then this this long journey, um, not just health challenges, but through business challenges, through being a woman, through being a part, like all the challenges that we all go through and all the different experiences. It's like if you don't let it stop you from moving forward in your life you start to build this muscle to be resilient. So you can continue forward regardless of what comes your way. And I I don't like when people think, oh, I'm not a confident person because I'm not born confident or I'm not a resilient person because I let all my challenges affect me. Like, no, all of that is a skill. It's a muscle. It's something that you do have control over because you have a choice to work to, to build it and to gain that throughout life's journey. And to me, that's, it, it's so in resonant with our mission at the Optimist Daily, because optimism is another, is another muscle. It's another skill that you can yes. add to your, your skill set in, in dealing with life. Um, having that hopeful, not, not hopeful, but having a, a curious mind about the world and how can you learn from it? How can you grow from it? It gives you that kind of power over over how to respond to the awful things that happen to us and the good things and we always say that you know I'm like the determined optimist and Christy's the pragmatic optimist and Alexa I think you are like the adaptable optimist (laughs) (laughs) but where Christy alluded to this but we'd love to share with our listeners a little bit about like where you are in your life right now how has your business flourished like I, it's a, we were joking about TikTok at the top of this because Christy and I cannot get our heads around TikTok and you are a TikTok guru. Where do you find yourself today as compared to when you were in that hospital, unsure of what life had ahead? Oh man, my life's changed a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, so today I am engaged, um, I am living in a dream home uh, with my fiance. I am running a successful business, Women in Power X, that is focused on elevating diverse voices, helping women grow their their dreams through the power of their voice of public speaking. Um, you know, promoting my book, getting as many people to read it as possible. And uh, while I still have the health challenges, like I said, 
they're chronic. Um, I am the healthiest I've been in the last seven years, but I do have to get an infusion um, every eight weeks. I have to have a certain diet that I keep and of course, really focus on my mindset because I have seen a direct correlation between my health and my happiness. So mm -hmm. yeah. it's definitely been um, a long journey to get here because just like three years ago, I was at another like burnout point in my life. I was traveling all over the country, did a 14 city speaking tour, but I didn't really have any groundedness, like no home base. And uh, there were still challenges going on with my my family. I'm very close to my mom, dad, and sister, and it hasn't been easy. I mean, but through all of that, because I kept being optimistic that things will work out, mm -hmm. um, even though there was, it's very painful. Um, and and still today, there's days that are very very hard. I mean, because with an autoimmune. Yeah. You never know when it's going to pop up. And so I'm always living with that fear. But being transparent and finding the courage since then to now to share more has helped me feel so much less alone in the world. Mm -hmm. And that's why I really like focus on that through our company initiatives is like share not just what you do, but who you are, because that's really what's going to change your own life and, and the people that you you work with and and, and create that impact. Alexa, I, I so identify with that statement and 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 it's the personal connection which really can enhance our own happiness or our set sense of well-being in our lives. And unless we have that, it's really hard to keep your head up when you, when you're faced with the challenges that come at us all the time, just as part of life. But um I think Summers and I could both continue to talk to you for a few hours because you're totally one of our tribe. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yep. we, we do have to get to our next thing and so do you. So I think it's time for us to wrap up this interview. And as our listeners know, we always like to finish with our guests by asking them, what is it that's making you optimistic right now? What is it in your life which sparks your inner optimism? And can you share that with our uh, listeners? Oh, there's so many things that I'm optimistic about, but I would say the main thing is that I'm very optimistic around uh, the future of our society in really um, allowing the empathetic, authentic, transparent leaders uh, lead the way in different industries and seeing more of that transparency and that vulnerability amongst the people that we look up to. I'm very, very optimistic around that. And I think, um, you know, when we see people that are doing the things that we want to do and they're vulnerable and they're authentic and transparent, like it allows us to do that as well. And I think the world just becomes a better place when we, we all share that. Oh, I feel like clapping. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. Clap. <laughs> Everybody, <laughs> guys, Alexa, thank you so much for this interview. Christy, as always, it has been such a delight to share this seat with you. And to all of our listeners, thank you everyone for listening to the Optimist Daily Update. We'll make sure to have a link in our show notes so that you can get adaptable. You can also go on to Amazon or any other book retailer that are listed on her own website as well. We promise to continue to share solution-based stories with ideas on how you can participate in this changing world and ensure it is changed for the good. We promise to cover the current events with accuracy, legitimate sources, and offer you the information needed most to chart new paths for all of us. You guys, you know we're reader-funded, and we ask this at the end of every episode, but it is incredibly important right now please become an emissary on the optimistdaily.com and for as little as $5 a month, help support reader funded independent journalism. Or give it as a gift for Christmas. <laughs> that yep. could be something that would yep. help us out and your, whoever you give it to. <laughs> so share the optimism, spread the optimism. Thank you guys very much. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow. Well, Monday. We'll be back on Monday. Yeah, we'll be back on Monday. We'll be back. The kids will be back. Exactly. <laughs> 